All right, folks, and welcome to another stock analysis workshop. And today we're going to analyze Beth Bath and Beyond. The company has increased significantly over the last couple of weeks. And I want to apply our usual process of evaluating a stock the way we do in our analyst training programs. So as part of the agenda, number one, try to really understand what's going on with the stock from a situation overview standpoint. Number two, apply our own preliminary analysis by performing sales multiple valuation to determine if the stock is overvalued, undervalued, or should we just simply avoid. And then thirdly, share more information to you about our analyst education programs. And lastly, why are we doing this? Well, we do this to improve financial literacy, to make you a smarter investor. And if you're looking for a career in finance, work on Wall Street or work at a hedge fund or at a private equity firm, then this would help you develop more of those technical skills to pursue careers that pay over six figures therefore improving the income inequality gap. So with that being said, folks, let's dive right into the material that we've prepared here for you. Now, what I usually like to have as a reference point is our stock phase model. For those of you that have been following our stack analysis workshop, you should be more familiar with this. We have an article on our website. I encourage you to go to RomeroMentoring.com and under the article section, you're going to see an entire description about our stock phase model. And again, it just gives us a reference point or better yet, a framework of thinking on market psychology. What is the market sentiment or the mindset of investors? When they're buying these specific stocks, what are the cycles and can we anticipate the next move to the upside uh, or maybe, or perhaps anticipate uh, a leg down on any particular stock or market simply using this framework or this stock model that I'm illustrating right here on my screen. So this is going to be a reference point. And of course, we're going to apply fundamental valuation analysis to also uh, complement what we've illustrated what I'm illustrating right here on my screen now in terms of the overall macro picture well we know that we are still in an inflationary environment we know that the fed is still raising interest rates and that means that technology stocks may not perform so well some parts of the economy may do better than others and it is our job as mar uh, as market participants to understand that and really understand capital inflow and outflow from different sectors of the economy especially when it's being represented in the equities market now in terms of Beth Bath and beyond right so what's the situation well the stock over the past couple of weeks has had a significant move to the upside. But I'm illustrating a 10-year historical chart. Okay. And we can see that the stock, you know, at one point was trading around $80 a share. This thing has declined about 90% from its all-time high. And over the past uh, couple of years, we had the major boom cycle when the Fed decided to uh, print money when the federal government decided to issue $2 trillion of, uh, worth of dollars to alleviate any type of challenges or pain from COVID-19. And then, of course, you know, we had the crash that came down and then we're seeing that upside or this major uptick uh, on Beth Beth and beyond. But this allows us to have some reference point or have some context in terms of the overall macro picture of the stock. But why has it increased, right? Why is the stock up so much in this short period of time? Well, there was an article or an SEC filing, I should say, that came out where Coin Venture Capital uh, showed that they had a significant interest on Beth Bath & Beyond, nearly owning 12% of their shares outstanding. This was on their latest uh, quarterly filing where they're showing all of the positions that they had. Now, it also revealed that his firm had out-of-the-money call options. And if I'm not mistaken, some articles are even suggesting that the call options were around $60 uh, a share. Now, that's definitely way out of the money. And the time frame, if I'm not mistaken, was about uh, 24 months, way out of the money. 
And what I would encourage you to do is to simply do a Google News run. Simply type, and I'll put it up here on my screen. Just simply type on Google, okay? Beth Bath & Beyond stock. And go through the list of several articles or stories that have been coming out from several media outlets. This one's for from Monthly Fool, Fortune, CNBC, actually two articles uh, from CNBC, Market Watch, and so on. Now, this could also be short interest coverage. I also know that the stock was one of those feature um, that was heavily shorted and maybe is also a short squeeze uh, that's been happening on the stock. But when you get to see these type of major moves to the upside, right, it typically tends to suck in a lot of retail investors, a lot of people that probably have missed uh, the stock, maybe perhaps buying it down here. And now they're buying it up here. And perhaps they are going to experience another leg to the downside. Same way it happened here. Okay. See here how, how it comes down. Now it's happening again. Probably same way it happened up here, right? Comes all the way up and then comes all the way down. So very important to understand these cycles, folks. Um, from a technical analysis standpoint, for all of those of you that are technicians and like to look at chart, here's another inflection point. This is support, right? So if you train your skill set to recognize these patterns, well, you could perhaps anticipate this kind of move. And if I scroll down, we can basically see our reference model as well. And if we kind of put it side by side, let me just minimize this right here. You could begin to see that the same story or the same cycle plates itself over and over again, right? Where in phase one is the accumulation phase, right? There is no coverage of the media. Uh, usually no analyst is recommending the stock and you have early investors anticipating a press release or a catalyst to receive confirmation that the fundamental picture of the company is perhaps improving. Then on phase two, you get that confirmation. Then the media comes in and begins to promote the stock. And then this is where you get the whole public mania where late investors come into the party and phase one and phase two investors are selling it to you. You could see that scenario played that played out from 2020 to 2022, right? Goes up, comes down. Now you're getting to see it in a much uh, sooner uh, time frame or in a shorter time frame, right? Goes up and probably it's going to come back down if the fundamental picture hasn't changed, if it doesn't change, meaning are they going to be generating more revenue? Is the company profitable? How much free cash flow are they generating? What is their expected revenue growth over the next 10 years? And how much cash flow will the company accumulate over the next 10 years? And what is the intrinsic value of those cash flows worth today, which is represented in the stock price? So that is part of the process that you really have to understand and perform for yourself before you decide to buy this company, buy and hold for um, the long run. And of course, you need to do your own homework, perform your own due diligence. So let's go through the process of first evaluating comps. Now, here's a short break. If you're enjoying our content, don't forget to visit our website, RomeroMentoring.com, and check out our starter analyst programs where you'll learn financial modeling, investment analysis, valuation, and develop the skills professional analysts apply on the job each day. In addition to that, you'll have access to our platform and exclusive access to content relating to investing, stock analysis, opinion, and much more. Join our growing analyst community and level up your skills today. Now back to our content. On this screen, I'm showing the list of competitors that Beth Bath & Beyond has ex exposure to, okay, Williams-Sonoma, Wayfair, RH, and so on. Look at the trading multiples for all of these companies, especially from a mean and medium standpoint. Is Beth Bath & Beyond trading above or below the industry mean and medium? Well, you can see here that on a sales multiple standpoint, they're trading below. They're trading at a 55% discount from the industry mean and medium. What about from an EBITDA multiple standpoint? Well, they're trading at a premium, 47%, okay? 11 times versus seven and a half times. So something that's going on that the stock is now trading 
above the market um, average. And of course, this has to do to the stock price increase increasing more than 200% over the last three weeks. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, will the stock price come down or will the multiples revert back to the industry mean and median? This is mean reversion type of strategy, right? That's a question or an observation that you need to ask yourself and perform your own analysis to be able to arrive to your own answer. And then, of course, we have PE multiple. Look at the peer group. They're basically trading between 12 and a half and 10 and a half. Uh, Beth, Beth, and beyond. On an LTM basis, last 12 months, they have negative earnings, which means they're not profitable yet. So this is a big red flag, okay? And if we pay clo a closer attention to the profitability of the business, which is represented in the form of margins, we have gross margins, EBITDA margins, and EBIT margins. Look at the industry. From a gross margin standpoint, it's between 35 and 36%. BFF and beyond is below that, 31%. Now look at the EBITDA margins, okay? 14 to 16%. Meanwhile, here is represented negative 1%. So it's really not the financial profile that I would like to see on a company that is up two or 300% in a very short um, time frame. okay? And then of course, from an EBIT margin standpoint, the industry, it's between 14 and 12%. Meanwhile, Beth up and beyond, ladies and gentlemen, it's negative. Okay. So this is interesting that you know they're they're currently trading at a, a at a negative uh EBITDA margin and, and EBIT margin. But meanwhile, according to Cap IQ, this number is positive, 11 x Okay. So there's probably some adjustments that is being made to this number. Uh, maybe perhaps in the form of uh, depreciation and amortization, that's an adjustment that you will have to make to the numbers or stock-based compensation uh, in order to normalize the numbers. So I'm getting a little bit technical here, um, not trying to confuse you, but pay very close attention to these margins. Right now, they're negative, which indicates that Beth Bath and Beyond is not profitable. Now, the next thing I like to look at is the financials of the company. And I've listed them right here on our financial tab. Let's go through this quickly so that we can better understand the financial profile. You can see that historically, okay, revenue has basically been declining, okay? And I'm also illustrating that right here in our bar chart. So revenue from 2018 to 2022 is basically down. And from 2023 to 2025, you do get a slight increase in revenue growth. By 2024, they're expecting almost 2% increase in revenue. And by 2025, Wall Street analysts are expecting a 3% jump in revenue. This is very anemic growth. Okay, You typically find uh, single-digit revenue growth on mature companies, mature industries, where they're usually not growing and there's no innovation. So this is a bit of a concern to me when I'm looking at the future financial profile of the business, especially from a revenue standpoint, okay? Now, let's take a look here at EBITDA and their profitability. So here's EBITDA and their margins. This is very thin. I mean, you can see EBITDA margin has been declining. And then from 2023 to 2024, it's basically negative. And then it's slightly improved by 2025. Folks, this is, I do not like to see these type of margins. I mean, think about it, right? To simply explain it, for every dollar of revenue that Beth Bath and Beyond generates, they're basically making about two and a half cents. Think about that, two and a half cents, which means that if inflation picks up the way we've seen, the company is going to be... Uh, burning through a lot of cash. They're not going to be profitable. So there's really no cushion for them to operate in a very uh, uh, challenging economic environment, right? This is a business that is susceptible to bankruptcy if they continue the way they're they're continuing. So this is a big red flag. When a company has less than 5% EBITDA margin, to me, that's a red flag. I usually try to avoid those type of business um, from a long-term investment standpoint. 
Same story with EBIT. Look at EBIT margin. It's the same story, negative, right? Look at earnings per share on the forecast side, on the future side, negative, right? So the way I assess the financial profile of Beth Bath & Beyond is that it is a maturing company with very slow or anemic revenue growth. It's not profitable. It has single-digit margins on an EBITDA standpoint, and it is a business that is highly susceptible to inflation pressures, to competition, to monetary policy, and it's perhaps a high-risk business. This is something that for my own personal risk profile and appetite, I would avoid. As a long-term investor, someone that is looking to buy and hold a stock for maybe uh, three, five, or, or 10 years, this is a stock that I would avoid. Just simply by evaluating and assessing the financial profile of Beth Bath and Beyond. Um, that's my take, ladies and gentlemen, just looking at the financial profile. Okay. Now, another important step that I like to, to take is to evaluate their historical trading multiples. Okay. So right here, I'm simply illustrating sales, sales multiple. Uh, and this is a metric that, you know, a lot of investment bankers and professional investors like to look at, especially private equity investors, when they're looking to buy, acquire a company. They want to know, am I buying at a very high sales multiple, which over the last 10 years for Beth Ben Beyond is 1.5 times sales multiple. The low is 0.2. And they actually hit the low uh, in January of 2019. The median is 0.5. And over the last several weeks with the increase or the jump in the stock, you can see that there's been an uptick on their sales multiple. And right now, that number is, it should be about 0.5, right? Because it's right there. Let me just come back here. Let me scroll down. up ah, 0.68. So let me just update this to 0.68 so that it can reflect the actual number, 0.68, okay? And chances are, or I suspect that once the dust settles, this stock is perhaps going to go back down. And perhaps a private equity firm is reviewing Beth Beth and Beyond. Maybe they have a restructuring plan that can improve the company, bring it back to profitability. And maybe they're looking at the sales multiples and perhaps evaluating what would be the return on investment if they acquire the company below the median sales multiple. Okay, so pay very close attention to what's been happening with the stock in these multiples, okay? Now, from an EBITDA standpoint, this picture tells a whole different story. Right. Look at the uptick. I mean, look at this parabolic move. OK. And it's important to understand that over the last 10 years, folks, from August 2012 to August 2022, the highest EBITDA multiple has been 11 times. And right now, Beth Beth and Beyond EBITDA multiple is 10.8. Has anything changed with the company? Has the fundamental story changed? Has there been a restructuring or a change in management? Do they have a new or better product? How are they doing with online sales? How are they marketing and promoting their business? What is their messaging? Are they expanding to new markets? Like These are questions that you need to be asking yourself in order to justify a 10.8 EBITDA multiple on Beth F and Beyond. And we just finished looking at the financial profile for 2023, 2024, and 2025. And the what the street is expecting is negative numbers. So they're basically going to be burning through cash, losing money, not profitable for the next three years. So does the company deserve this high EBITDA multiple? Well, from my preliminary analysis, the short answer to that is no. So again, I suspect that this multiple is perhaps going to come right back down to the median, right? That is a probability. You are in the probability business. So I'm just showing you this information to give you a different perspective that perhaps the media is not showing, that perhaps other news outlets are not reporting. And I'm giving you 
a, a, a perspective from a professional analyst standpoint so that you can understand the methodology, the analysis, and the tools that you need to be a successful investor and improve your, 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 your stock picking and investing abilities, okay? Now, with all that being said, I want to be able to perform some preliminary valuation analysis, okay? And I'm going to do this through uh, sales multiples. So I'm going to walk you through this preliminary model that I've created right here, and we're going to populate the numbers. So first, I'm just going to link my sales 2019, link it back to the sales tab, the financial tab. There it is. I'm going to drag this across the formula. Okay, make sure that this is correct. 2021, this is fine. 2022, actually, I want to change this to 2020. Yep, I want to be able to capture the numbers that I care about. So 2020, here it is, copy. I'm going to copy, paste the formula. 2022, I'm also going to link to 2023. There it is, drag across. Okay, so you can see the revenue growth over the next three years. The current share price is coming from my comp table. Uh, the sales multiple that I'm going to be applying to the stock is going to be based on my three different scenarios, which is the base case, the bear case, and the bull case. The base case is essentially the current sales multiple. Okay, and where is this coming from? It's coming from my comp tab, which is provided by Capital IQ. Then I have my bear case, which essentially I am assuming a 20 or perhaps a 30% discount on their current sales multiple, which means the stock might decline 30 or 50% from where it's currently trading at. And the bull case is me assuming the historical high sales multiple, which I have illustrated right here in my historical multiples chart, which is 1.5. So that's my base, bear, and bull case scenario using sales multiples. Okay, so now, how does this work? Well, I'm going to take the sales multiple and multiply by the expected revenue, okay? That would give me an implied enterprise value of the business, which accounts for the capital structure of the company, you know, equity and debt. Uh, I am going to now go from enterprise value to my equity value calculation. So I need to extrapolate my cash why do we do this? Well, because in investment banking, we assume that the market is giving us a premium for that cash on hand. And I'm also going to account for my debt, my interest bearing debt. So I'm going to calculate net debt, take equity value, link to my shares outstanding numbers. And I'm now going to divide equity divided by my shares outstanding. And that gives me an implied share price, okay, of $80.62. Now, of course, remember, this is on the bull case, okay? Because I'm assuming a 1.5 sales multiple. Now, let me drag this across. Okay, let me drag across my share sales standing. Okay, and of course, I am going to assume a 10% discount rate, okay? This is known as WAC. So on a bull case scenario where the stock on a sales basis, ends up trading at 1.5 times, you can expect over the next uh, three years, by 2025, on 2025 revenue, a share price of $81.97. That's an increase of 225% as, uh, as of now, where the stock is currently standing at, which is $23. Wow. So let's put here price target. Let's just round to $80. Okay. Now, what is the analysis or the investment thesis or, or why would the market pay 1.5 times uh, for Beth F and beyond? Well, a couple of reasons. One, this assumes that they have a new management team in place. This assumes that they have uh, new products. They are entering new markets. They're growing revenue. They become more profitable. They're generating positive free cash flow. It's essentially, it's, it's, Essentially, it has to become a turnaround story or or, or restructuring story that reemerges as a growth company, okay? Which is very hard to do, by the way. But that is the best case scenario, and also factoring that at the macro level, the economy is doing well, it's growing, interest rates are declining, and we're no longer in an inflationary environment. That's the bull case picture or the bull case scenario. 
if we change from case number three to a bear case, case number two, <laughs> look at the share price drop <laughs> over the next three years to a dollar and 83 cents. That's a 92% decline, ladies and gentlemen, from the current share price of $23 a share. Okay, this is assuming that the stock essentially is, is pricing in a 0.5 sales multiple. Now, what is the financial profile or, or better yet, the sentiment of the market? What, what needs to happen for this stock to decline 90%? Well, investors realize that this is a very, very tough and challenging business to turn around. They're going to continue to burn uh, cash for the next five years. It's going to be a business that is losing market share. It's going to be a business that, as it currently stands, it doesn't have perhaps a, a, a business plan to, to survive, and it might be facing bankruptcy, right? That's what the situation or what the market might uh, anticipate or, or the ideas behind a stock declining 90%. Um, that's just another scenario, okay? I'm not saying that might happen, but that's just another scenario that you have to keep uh, in the back of your mind because you are in the probability business. So this is the worst case scenario. I'm going to round this, my price target, to $2 a share, okay? And my base case scenario, which is case number one, let's take a look here. Okay, so assuming 2025 revenue of $6.2 and a sales multiple of 0.7, the stock can potentially be $18, which is still lower than the current stock price right now. So that's a 22% decline. So I'm going to put up here on sell E4, 18. I'm just going to round to 18. And here are my three different cases and scenarios on the stock. So I can easily pull up my chart window, okay? And from here, have a very simple uh, projection, okay? I'm just gonna put that right here, just illustrating the different um, price target uh, from here. So one, this thing can go the way up and perhaps uh, have a $80 price target. This is maybe our best case scenario, right? This is our bull case, $80 a share. Uh, our base case, We'll bring this to $18 a share, okay? Let's put this here, $18 a share, base case. And my bear case or worst case scenario would bring this thing right back down uh, to $2 a share. I mean, these are three scenarios, but of course, we are in the probability business. It's, it's your job to do your own homework. You might disagree or agree with it with any one of these cases, but it comes down to probability. And you, if you wanna find out if you need skin in the game, right? And of course we always, uh, um, you know, preach to, to be disciplined, to be a smart investor. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, diversification. Just make sure that you train yourself properly before you decide to step into the market and start investing uh, blindly. So I basically just performed some preliminary analysis, gave you three different scenarios on what the outlook or the probability of the stock perhaps um, increasing to $80, $18, uh, and $2 a share, uh, what that might be. The other thing I may encourage you to do is to pull up the company website, okay? and scroll all the way down. Let's see if we can find their investors relations. Okay, company information. Here's the investors relations section right here. Let's click on that. Okay, and go through their press releases. Let's see, news. And go through the news, right? And see if there's been any talks about restructuring the business, how they perform in the most recent quarter, so here you're getting to see a lot of information. So if we quickly go through this, just looking at the headline news. So uh, three new buzz, worthy brands. Okay, Beth and Beyond launches furniture. Okay, Beth and appoints new chief accounting officer. Okay, so this is uh, leadership change, which could be positive. Uh, 
Definitely review their quarterly results. Announces, ah, here it is, see? Announces executive leadership change, which is usually part of a restructuring uh, story. Okay, uh, quarterly results as well. Rebuilding together, launch a national partnership, home repairs. Okay, let's see, anything else? Any talks about restructuring? Kickstart, college season, so forth. Okay, uh, I'm not going to continue going through this, but I highly encourage you to go through any type of news that is material information. Material information relates to earnings, share buyback, uh, an acquisition, change in management, partnerships, anything that will affect the fundamental picture of the company relating to revenue, cash flow, profitability, uh, 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 accessing new markets, et cetera. Okay. So that's what I'm referring to when I say material information that might impact the fundamental picture of the business. All right. And last but not least, don't forget to check out our website. Check out our starter programs where you can learn a lot more about our analyst education programs to teach you these technical skills and become a smarter investor. If I look at our articles, okay, you can find the stock face model right here. And if I access our platform, you can see what our students are doing and the type of work that they're creating on their own and their share prices, right? Here's one of our students in our program showcasing his Wall Street uh, bear case and upside case on Zoom. Here's another student, okay, showcasing his price target on Bumble, the Wall Street case, the bear case, and the bullish case. So you have access to this through our analyst starter programs or our investment banking career programs, all right? So let's go back to our model. And let's take a look here. We could actually play a little bit with this. Let's change the discount rate for these guys to capture the level of risk, maybe the cost of borrowing. Let's increase this perhaps to 15 and look at how it changes, right? So on the base case, you have $17, which means 25% uh, downside from the current stock price. The bear case will bring it down to $1.75. And the bull case will bring the stock to perhaps $78 a share over the next three years if, if they improve the financial profile picture and future expectations of the company. All right, folks, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've learned a few things about valuation and applying professional analyst skills to better help you understand the situation of the stock. And again, determine, is it a buy? Is it a sell? Or should you simply avoid? This is all preliminary analysis. You need to do your own homework. And to wrap things up, here's an example of the level of analysis that our students in our programs are actually doing. This is an AMD, okay? Here's the entire financial model on AMD. This is what you would need to do on Beth Beth and Beyond if you really want to take a significant stake on the business and hold it for the next five years or, or, or 10 years, right? Here's a depreciation schedule. Here's a revenue breakdown. Here's comparable company analysis. Here's trading multiple valuation. Here's discounted cash flow analysis, football feel, different scenarios, and so on. So this is the level of uh, uh, training and skill set that our students are receiving and developing in our analyst program. All right, folks. So with that being said, I hope you found value in this brief stock analysis workshop on Beth Beth and beyond and leave a comment, you know, engage, participate. Let me know what you think. Is there something that we're missing? Um, what additional information would you add on in the comment session to determine uh, the projected price target based on preliminary uh, sales multiple valuation? All right, folks, take care and I'll see you in the next one.